Hey guys, Kaylin at Elbum Mill Farm. Um, I know it's Friday and I said I wasn't going to do any videos on Fridays because Fridays are groceries and errands and cleaning house, um, but I have to get this done today so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video about it. Um, this is Hazel. Hazel's getting bred this weekend. Um, this weekend is a good date for breeding by the moon and if you're interested in that I do have a video explaining that. Um, but before I breed I always check them over, make sure they're in good shape, check her ears, check her nails, um, prefer make sure everything's good before she goes to have some babies um, her ears were good I had to trim her nails um, I did accidentally get the quick you can see a little bit on this one so I did have to use some styptic powder on that so when you're trimming nails it's helpful to have some styptic powder um, I always keep clippers at all the different areas I have rabbits I keep some in the rabbit building some out in the rabbit yard down in the colony keep a set in my overalls um, but what I have left to do on her and this is what I don't normally have to do so I wanted to go ahead and get the video you can kind of see she's got all this hair that is just blowing everywhere um, she had a rough molt this time and I need to get all that out really before she goes getting pregnant because when she goes to build a nest I want her to have nice good fur for that instead of some of this clumpy stuff um, so I'm going to show you how to do that and while I get all that out I'm going to explain to you um, why I line breed because um, she's going to be line bred this weekend and so I'm going to explain how that goes. But as far as getting this out, uh, Rex have a different type of hair and you can't use a brush on them. You're not supposed to really get them wet. Um, some people take and they wet their hands and just rub their hands through the fur and it pulls out that extra fur. Um, I'm really grossed out by fur and my own hair for that matter. So I don't like to do that. And you're gonna see me make a bunch of awful faces as I do this because when the fur blows back in my face, it just it just grosses me out. Um, but so what I actually do is these big clumps you can see, they're not really attached, most of them. And so you can just go ahead and lightly pull those out. Um, occasionally you'll get ones like this, see how the skin's coming out a little much? Um, I won't pull too hard on that. I'll take the blade to that in a minute. But I just go through pull out these bigger clumps and I mean it, it comes right out because this is what she's already technically shed out it just stayed um, with the other ones like the the hair that's not coming out and so I just get a good majority of those out if I can Sometimes it's nice to do this on a windy day if you can know which direction the wind is blowing because that blows it away from you. Um, it's going to be my luck today that if and when the wind does blow, it's probably going to blow it to me. Okay, so those are the ones that were mostly easy to get out. Well, actually that one came out pretty easy too. Okay. The other thing you can do, you can't use um, a regular pet brush on these guys. Um, their hair is just too fine for that. Um, so a lot of Rex breeders get saw blades with really, really close together teeth. Um, I'll try to get that as close as you can see. And then you just treat it like you would a brush. Just start brushing it down. Um, and you can see it's going to start flying everywhere. And literally I'll just do this till I get most of the hair that is gross out. And it's just old dead hair. You know, we lose ours pretty much constantly. Rabbits lose some, but they go through a couple molts depending on the season. Um, and she had a really rough time this last time. Normally she can get all this out on her own. Most of my rabbits I don't have to do this with. Have a couple lazy bucks um, who they don't do a very good job of taking care of this, but most of my does are really good about cleaning themselves real nice. Um, and while I keep doing this, um, I'm going to explain while, why I line breed. Um, line breeding is a word for breeding related rabbits. And in Hazel's case, um, I'm actually breeding her back to her sire or her father. And a lot of people would frown upon this. Um, but most of the breeders I know do not. Um, most of the serious breeders do it in one way or another. Um, I was actually taught two different things. Um, one, you breed the rabbit in front of you, not its papers. Um, so if you have two rabbits who you think are going to make superior babies, 
even, you know, no matter how they're related or whatever, go ahead and breed them. Um, the other thing is it's called line breeding. If it works and inbreeding, if it doesn't, um, technically it's still inbreeding. Um, it's just kind of what breeders like to say. Um, one of the reasons you don't see this much in dogs and cats um, is because people don't call dogs and cats for you know genetic deficiencies or those kinds of things. Um, livestock people are more likely to eat it if they do a bad breeding and it doesn't come out the way they want. And we just don't do that with people or pets really. Um, even though with pets we probably should, it would save us a lot of trouble on pets getting into old age with some health issues and that kind of thing. Um, but anyways, I bred a pair of rabbits um, a couple months ago and they were half siblings. Um, they shared a dad and the litter, I got what I wanted, you know, as far as color and shape and size and that kind of thing out of the actual litter, but they got nest box out at about 12 days old, which is an eye infection and I had to treat it. Um, and when I was cleaning and opening the eyes to treat that, um, I may have messed up one of the doe's eyes. And when she was about four weeks old, um, I noticed that she had something called entropion. And that's when the eyelid curls in and the eyelashes rub on the actual eye. And it's really painful. And really the only way to treat that is surgery. So um, I actually humanely euthanized her. Um, but it can be genetic. And so I wanted to test to see if that was actually genetic or if it was from where I was cleaning her eye when she was 12 days old. So I did that breeding again, and I'm waiting to see how that one comes out. But those rabbits share um, their dad. And so I thought if I could do a couple other breedings to see if it's genetic, because if it is genetic, then it did probably come from the buck that they share as a father. Um, and so, you know, I'm gonna test and see because if it is genetic in my lines, um, I'll actually scrap that entire line. I'm not gonna continue to breed something that could have some genetic issues down the line. Um, you know, I don't wanna pass that on to anybody else. It's not good for the rabbits. Um, it's, just, it's just poor practice. So in the event that this is genetic, um, there's a lot of rabbits I'm going to have to remove from my breeding lines. Um, so I wanna be sure before I go either petting these guys out or what because I mean I'm gonna lose pretty much my entire trial line um, so what I'm doing is Hazel shares the same father as the other two um, it's my buck Hawthorne um, and so I'm actually going to breed Hazel back to Hawthorne this weekend because if it is genetic I mean that means that they're getting it from him um, she is already his offspring so she likely carries it. Um, I mean, it's not for sure, but it increases my chances. And so I'm going to breed her back to him and see how the babies come out. Um, if I have a bunch of nest box eye, um, or if the entropion does actually present, then of course I'll make the decision to, um, humanely euthanize any of the babies that end up with it. And then I'll be petting out, um, the parents. Um, but I'm going to ask that people pick them up spayed or neutered. I'm not going to send them out with any kind of ability to breed. I just don't want that spread around. Um, but so I, I really need to know for sure how this is going. And when you mix two completely unrelated rabbits, um, it's just a genetic wild card. You don't know for sure what you're going to get. I mean, there are some things that you have a good idea, but when you're talking recessives that may not even show up for generations, it's just much easier to go ahead and breed some related rabbits because what that's gonna do is bad traits, if they're recessive, it's gonna stack them up. And so when people say that inbreeding causes, um, you know, genetic issues, it's not that it caused the genetic issues, it just showed them. Those genetic issues were already there. And if you had bred that rabbit to a completely unrelated rabbit who also carried that genetic issue, you were still gonna get it. It doesn't matter whether or not they were related. It matters that they carried that gene. So if you just breed two unrelated animals, then you're hoping these genetics stack up for you to see, but they generally don't. Whereas when I breed her back to her dad, if that genetic issue is there, I stand a much better chance of having it come forward so I can do something about it instead of having it 
hidden in my line for years for other customers to take one of my rabbits and breed it to an unknown rabbit and suddenly it appears and they don't know why it appeared, it would be because my line carried it. And so I, I just don't want that. And so that's why most of the breeders I know actually will do um, related breedings. Um, a lot of them will do um, dad to daughter, uncle to daughter, uh, mom to son, grandson to grandmother, you know, just not everybody does full siblings and I actually did a full sibling breeding the other day because I really wanted to test something and the babies came out amazing I mean they look the way I wanted them to a little smaller than I wanted them to be but they I mean they they looked great the only thing when you're purposely stacking up these genetics is you need to know that you may run into a genetic issue that you're gonna have to call the entire litter I mean I had a litter these ones actually were not related in any way shape or form the parents um, but that entire litter had bad fur, which is um, not good in this breed. Fur is a really important thing in this breed. They had really bad fur. Size was awful. They didn't grow well. I mean, they just weren't hardy rabbits. And so I didn't sell any of those and I didn't save any of those. Those guys all went to the freezer. And so when you're purposefully breeding to improve, you have to be willing to eat um, or spay and neuter or whatever you're going to do to keep those animals out of the breeding lines. Um, when people breed totally unrelated I'm not saying all the time some of them do focus really good on improving the rabbit but a lot of times what you run into with some of those people is they're focused on producing the most number of rabbits they can to sell um, not so much in improving the animal itself and I want to increase you know size I want them nice and meaty um, there aren't a lot of wrecks in my area so I had to start with what I've got and continually improve them. Um, it's kind of a slow process, but it goes faster because I do line breed. I can take, and if I find something I just hate in my lines, you know, a rabbit with bad loins or, you know, long shoulders or something like that, I can just go ahead and start knocking that out instead of having to take this rabbit, breed it to an unrelated rabbit, see what those babies do, and then take those babies and breed them to an unrelated. I mean, you're constantly introducing new genes. Whereas if you line breed, you have a rough idea of what genes you're already looking for. Um, another way to line breed to an extent is um, I have some rabbit friends who've bought rabbits off of me in the past. And then they've taken the rabbits they bought from me, bred them to outside rabbits, and now they've got babies that share some of my bloodlines, but they're not dad to daughter or, you know, half siblings or anything like that. Um, you know, it's it's a couple generations back. So if, if you're a little leery of stacking up those genes tight, then you could always find somebody who has semi-related rabbits to yours. Um, it's still not gonna be quite as quick as breeding related rabbits, um, but it is gonna pop some of that stuff up. Because um, the genes do stack. You're stacking either negative recessives or positive. So if there's something you absolutely love in a rabbit, like I had a rabbit named Everest, and I absolutely loved everything about this rabbit. Um, I loved his head shape. It was a weird kind of shape. His kits seemed to grow faster. I loved his color. Um, he was a pretty sweet boy, except for the day he peed on me. Um, so I loved that rabbit. And so in my self lines, you'll see he is actually pretty prominent in a bunch of my self lines because I just loved everything about that rabbit. Um, so it stacked up the good stuff, but occasionally if you had bred some of those together If there was something recessive that you know, just was not good It would have stacked that up too. So line breeding or inbreeding does not cause genetic deformities It just brings them out into the open that you can see them. They were already there You just couldn't see them because they were recessive So if this is something you're interested in There are a whole lot of books and websites and really good rabbit groups that can help you Learn a little more about what to look for and that kind of stuff. Um, but the next time you're considering getting a pair of rabbits or adding a rabbit to your rabbit tree, if you've never line bred before, maybe consider it. You know, just know that you have to be, <clears throat> excuse me, way more hard on those babies that come out. You have to make sure that you're willing to do the right thing and call out anything that's bad. You can't be willing to pass on those genetics to somebody else to screw up their lines. I mean, you have to be willing to work hard at this. And I mean, eventually you'll get some decent rabbits. Um, but so try that out. Um, hopefully getting her nasty hair out showed you because I did not know what to use on Rex when I first got them. 
Um, I tried to use a shedding blade. I tried to use a slicker brush and none of that was helping me get all the gobs of hair out. Um, but another Rex breeder, you know, passed on the information about using this. Um, and like I said, you can wet your hands and just rub it, but that really grosses me out because then you get the hair stuck to your hand and you have to pull off gobs of wet hair. And I mean, that it just makes me gag. Um, but those are some options for, you know, how to go about getting some um, poor molts off of your rabbits and some hopeful information, I hope, to um, maybe give you some ideas on how to go about line breeding and why it's not the terrible thing that so many uninformed people like to say it is. It, it's not bad. It, it's responsible as long as you're responsible. So thanks for stopping by. I'm going to finish her up and then go do my errands and get my groceries and all that good stuff. So see you guys next week. Bye.